despite what the liars that run Google, the church, and the education system might say, we all know that a magnet is capable of erasing the hard drive on a computer system and of course also the information that's contained on a flash drive or other forms of electronic data storage. Now, it is not entirely understood why, well at least by most, why this happens. So let's look into this, the implications of what this could mean. Now, the Earth itself can be seen as a very large round battery, but also incorporates magnetic properties, which of course is connected to the idea of gravity and the north and south poles, just like the negative and positive end on a battery. And of course, positive and negative end on a magnet as well. Now, some of us have seen the TV show Breaking Bad, in which there is an episode that a large and powerful magnet is used to wipe the hard drive on a computer that is contained in this uh, evidence lockup. So this brings us into the context of this video, which is the idea of a worldwide magnetic blackout, or rather a global erasing of information or data of information. And naturally, in such a occurrence, things like emergency services, security cameras, uh, those won't work along with cars uh, and buses, of course, all of which use electronic navigation systems and other things. Planes as well, they would not work either because of the electronic component to these things. Virtually, the only thing that would actually work would be something not electronic, something mechanical, something that does not run out off of off of a system that can be manipulated or that can be interfered with using magnetic capabilities or other such forms of influence. Now, in the movie Blade Runner in 2049, it is posited forward a situation in which which they call the blackout, in which everything electronic is erased and the only thing that remains are paper. Now, thinking about the illogical nature of this context, from what we have seen before about the way the world works, it is entirely plausible that the magnetic capabilities of the Earth could be manipulated in such a way that it wipes all data, which would have very large implications for electronics in general. And within the movie, it doesn't logically explain why electronics still operate despite having all the data wiped and the only thing working being on the computer. Of course, there's other implications to a global magnetic blackout and possible damages that could be uh, affected. This take, takes us into some interesting literature on the subject, such as an essay on magnetic attractions and on the laws of terrestrial and electromagnetism, comprising a popular course of curious and interesting experiments on the latter subject and an easy experimental method of correcting the local attraction of vessels of the compass in all parts of the world by Peter Barlow, associate in the Society of Civil Engineers and of the Royal Military Academy, second edition, much enlarged and improved, illustrated with plates by Lowry. London, printed for J. Maumann, Ludgate Street, and also sold by J. Taylor, High Holborn, 1823. On page 8, being thus assured that there are in every ball of iron two plates in which the compass may be anywhere pointed without being influenced in its direction, the one, the one that of no attraction as stated above and the other the vertical plane corresponding to the magnetic meridian, my next object was to ascertain how far the angle of deviation of the needle was influenced and what law that deviation observed when the compass was removed out of those planes. But before I proceed to describe the experiments performed with a view to this determination, it may not be amiss to examine the deductions already made, which may be stated as follows. In the first place, it has been shown that every iron ball has what, from analogy to the case of terrestrial magnetism, may for the present dominated a magnetic equator, lying in the plane of no attraction above mentioned. Just like the Earth also, it may be supposed to have two magnetic poles, the one directed towards the north and the other towards the south, the line joining those poles being parallel to the natural magnetic direction of the dipping needle. 
Now, something interesting that this uh, experiment is talking about is the use of a compass. And if you wanted to experiment in possible uh, ways to obstruct from magnetic interference of your equipment, say, making a bag of a certain material, you could try an experiment using a compass and see within what encased materials the compass no longer works. That would tell you that there's no ma well, there's very little effect on the magnetic penetration. Now, I don't know what the consequence of a global and powerful magnet would be, whether or not there is really any materials that could defend against that. Many of us know that certain elements of non-conductive property can protect equipment from radio frequency penetration, such as the use of, well, if you take, for instance, a lead line structure and you take a cell phone into it, the cell phone won't work because the uh, uh, radio frequency does not penetrate. But that's not necessarily the same case for magnet magnetism and such types of attraction forces and whatnot. And it's entirely possible that the reason why you can wipe data is because it's attracted to the magnet and that's eventually in some way pulled out of the equipment that it's stored in. But that's all conjecture anyway. Then on page nine, Having made these deductions, I conceived an ideal sphere to be circumscribed about the ball of iron. And assuming the circle of no attraction as an equator and the poles that circle as the poles of the sphere, I imagined circles of latitude and longitude to be described upon it and wished, if possible, to pass the compass round the ball in these several circles, keeping it always at the same distance from the center, so that in taking the deviations, I might separate the effect due to posi position from that which might otherwise have arisen from a change in the distance. I determined also in order to disengage the effect due to the longitude from that which had a reference to the latitude. To pass the compass in the first place over circles of latitude only, viz, in circles perpendicular to the magnetic equator, and finding after a few trials what I had indeed anticipated, that the deviations were the greatest in that circle which passed from the poles through the east and west points of the equator. I made this my first of principal meridian and considered its longitude as zero. In our next piece of literature, Electromagnetic Ore Separation by C. Godfrey Gunther with illustrations, 1909 Hill Publishing Company, 505 Pearl Street, New York, 6... Bouvier Street, London, EC, the Engineering and Mining Journal, Power, American Machinist. 1. Magnetism applied to ore dressing. All substances, solid, liquid, and gaseous, are either attracted or repelled by a magnet, though in most cases this influence is too feeble to be apparent except with delicately adjusted apparatus. The atmosphere has a definite magnetic attractability, and the magnetic behavior of solids may be said to be controlled by the magnetic qualities of the surrounding medium. If a substance is more permeable to magnetism than air, it is attracted. If less permeable, it is repelled. The permeability of air, air being the most common medium, is taken as one, and the permeabilities of all other substances are referred to it as unity. The permeabilities of substances more strongly attracted than air are therefore represented by values greater than one and are called paramagnetics. Substances less permeable than air are represented by values less than one and are called diamagnetics. The permeability of the diamagnetics is so neatly nearly unity that the phenomenon of magnetic repulsion is not a familiar one. The lines of force of a magnetic circuit pass along the path of least resistance. In other words, they pass through the most permeable substance available, paramagnetic particles. Introduced into a magnetic field tend to align themselves in the direction of the lines of force in precisely the same manner that a compass needle aligns itself with the magnetic meridian. Paramagnetics concentrate the lines of force while diamagnetics cause the lines of force to go around them. Passage of lines of force through particles induces magnetic polarity in them, and they gather in tufts or chains north pole to south pole, and are all, all held by the energizing magnet. The force with which these particles are attracted is a function of their permeability, the intensity of the field, and the time they are subjected to its influence. Now, before we move on, it would be good to note that what they're talking about here is a basic understanding about how the idea of magnetics works. 
Although we don't entirely understand how magnetism is really incorporated because there is a strong connection between magnetism, uh, electricity, and other forms of energy such as movement and heat and also, of course, radio frequency. Magnetism has an effect on radio frequency. In fact, it probably has a lot to do with the gravitational forces as well, of which it's likely not a force either because we don't have a very good understanding of it. And the dogma of current so-called scientists and their weird religious uh, structure, well, they prefer to try and suppress and force out any sort of attempts to really understand these concepts because they have a dogmatic established understanding that it's faulty and does not apply to reality. Either way, in order to combat a global magnetic erasing of digital information, one must understand the functions of how to mitigate that. And in this particular article, it's sort of talking about it's a way to think about that, and that is instead of per se trying to block a magnetic force, rather pass it around so it kind of it it, it kind of uh, disperses around to the sides, and then that thing is left in in essentially a bubble, right? The bubble passes air around it, things like that. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, subscribe to my channels, and check out my other content. There are free books available at the link, and if you so desire, you may support my work at PayPal Cash App. Thank you.